What up YouTube, Spike Robot here with another video, and this time it's part three of me reviewing every Looney Tunes cartoon. I don't really have much to say, let's just get to it. The Isle of Pingo Pongo. Oh, right off the bat, another one of the censored 11. Fuck me. Anyway, this one, it's one of those travel log cartoons. It actually has some decent gags in the beginning including a running gag with a prototype Elmer Fudd and a gazelle that does a pretty risque dance. Both of these are pretty enjoyable. Of course when the natives come to the island, this is when the cartoon gets pretty bad. A surprise to fucking no one. It's not, it's not for the reason you think though. While I would not call the uh, natives portrayal as anything close to progressive. They do seem to adopt costumes from the city life, which is interesting. They also don't sing the typical tribal song music that uh, you would expect. However, the main issue that I have with it is that it's just not that really that funny or entertaining. Most of it is just singing and dancing. But the ending gag is really good over. Uh, so overall, it's a decent cartoon. Rating 3 out of 5 stars with the title of Worth Watching. Porky the Fireman. This one has a pretty damn good idea. Porky is a firefighter in this one. It does have some pretty good gags revolving around trying to put out a burning building. But things go comically wrong, as always. Actually, I would say the first half of it is like that, but towards the end, they stop being that funny. Um, they start becoming weird and unjustifiably dark. I don't know, if that's your thing, you might like it. It's not my favorite Porky cartoon. It's not my favorite of the Porky cartoons, but it's still a decent cartoon that is definitely worth checking out. Rating? Three out of five stars with the title of Worth Watching. Catnip College. It's one of these cartoons that mostly consists of singing and dancing. I thought we were starting to move away from these, but I guess we just keep coming back to them. Anyway, the music in this one is mostly unimpressive. But once the cat who is given the dunce cap for not being able to have any rhythm starts to find that rhythm, the cartoon gets a little bit better. And I do kind of like the ending. But overall, this is not one that I would rewatch anytime soon. Rating 2 out of 5 stars with the title of OK But Lacks Staying Power. Porky's Party. This one has a good idea. It's about a birthday party for Porky. It even has some pretty decent cartoon gags, including a running gag with a caterpillar sewing various outfits constantly both inside and outside of animals' real clothing. It's fucking weird, but I love it. Apparently, Porky's dog brings drinks a cleaning substance that is 99% alcohol, and the most it does is fuzz up his hair quite a bit. Porky and the other animals that come to the party think the dog think it's an evil dog, which is really fucking confusing. But they eventually do realize it's just Porky's dog. But the ending punchline is weird and I don't love it. So overall it starts out good but the second half is just not great. This time I see even less people enjoying the second half. Not completely awful but not really good. Rating 2 out of 5 stars with the title of OK But Lacks Staying Power. Have you got any castles? This one is not that bad. It's about characters from books coming to life and doing vaudeville style segments. Some of these are pretty damn entertaining. Some highlights would be J Jekyll and Hyde, a skeleton, and Frankenstein doing an upbeat song. The segment with the Three Musketeers, the Middle e Oh, and the segment with the Three Musketeers and the Middle Eastern gags. I do have my gripes with it, like I'm not a big fan of the fucking little women or little men segment or the green pastures segment. 
However, the climax with the shooting of guns was pretty fucking wild. I'm not sure how I feel about the ending though, but overall, it's a decent cartoon. Rating, 3 out of 5 stars with the title of Worth Watching. Love and Curses. I can't tell if this one is supposed to be a parody of melodrama or is actually a melodrama. I say this because there are very few jokes in this cartoon. Now the ones that do come up are pretty funny, like the opening title card and the lifting of the train track, track gag. And the ending gag. The fight between the main hero and that bastard trying to steal his girlfriend is not the greatest, but it's better than I expected. At least there's actual fighting. But seeing how I don't really enjoy melodrama that much, I can't really say this is the best cartoon in this line. Rating 2 out of 5 stars with the title of OK But Lack Staying Power. Cinderella Meets Fella. Now this one I can definitively say is a parody of fairy tales. More specifically, a parody of Cinderella. There are way more fucking gags in this one. And they're actually funnier than the last cartoon. I was surprised about how much I laughed in this cartoon. Sure, some of the voices were kind of annoying, but there are so many good jokes in this one, including the metafictional ending. I think without this cartoon, we would probably not have Shrek. Even if you hate fairy tales, you might actually enjoy this one. Rating 4 out of 5 stars with the title of Awesome. Porky Spring Planting. This one is not the greatest. It starts out with some pretty boring gags. Although, I do like the image of Porky's dog getting annoyed. It gets a little more, bit more interesting later on with the chickens eating starting it gets a little bit more interesting later on when the chickens start eating all the food in Porky's garden. Wow, this is the first time when chickens are actually the antagonists in the cartoons. You would think this cartoon would prove that Porky's dog would actually be useful against them, but no. They turn him into Swiss cheese when he fights them. There's also a weird ending when Porky makes a deal to plant any food they want, they say no to every food except corn. I will say this cartoon has good ideas, but I feel like they could have been done better than they are. Rating 2 out of 5 stars with the title of OK But Lack Staying Power. Porky and Daffy. This is a pretty fucking great cartoon. It's about Daffy entering a boxing tournament and Porky cheering him on. The gags revolving around boxing are fucking amazing and has some real screwball energy to them. Daffy has some creative and hilarious ways of taking out his opponent. This is just off the wall fucking crazy and I love it. This is what battling Bosco should have been like. Rating 5 out of 5 stars with the title of Epic. The Major Lad Told Dawn. I can't believe I'm saying this but this is actually a pretty good cartoon. Sure, it starts out pretty boring with some weak gags, but I do like the idea of a hunter telling the stories of his adventures in Africa to a little boy. Also, this cartoon officially debunks the myth that elephants never forget. The cartoon also has some pretty fucking good fighting and a Popeye reference, and ends with a really good punchline to the elephant remembering joke. Just classic. Rating. 4 out of 5 stars with the title of Awesome. Holy Smoke. This is an anti-smoking cartoon. I don't give a fuck that this cartoon was ahead of its time. It is a poorly done anti-smoking cartoon. This cartoon is so fucking preachy. Literally. It doesn't show any of the effects of smoking. The most we get is Porky coughing. Also, the religious tones are so fucking abrasive, but fitting considering how it presents anti-smoking sentiment. I don't think children should smoke, but if adults want to smoke, then they should have that right. Do whatever makes you happy. This is another case where I can't really enjoy this cartoon because of my current beliefs. I've 
heard so much anti-smoking shit in my life, and I am at the point where I'm just like, leave smokers alone. They aren't hurting you, so why I even bother trying to stop them from smoking? I'm sick of this bullshit. At least now that summer has gone, made a stronger case for its anti-gambling sentiment than this. Made for its anti-smoking sentiment. Rating 1 out of 5 stars with the title of Horrible. Aladdin Baghdad. This one I'm kind of mixed on. While I do love the idea of Egghead being in the Middle Eastern setting and having a lamp that gives him everything he wants, I feel like this cartoon could have been a lot better than it was. Um, the Sultan has people perform vaudeville acts, and if the Sultan likes them, then he will have the person, that person, marry the princess. Always got to be fucking vaudeville acts. Sure, I do. I like it when Egghead punches the man who stole the lamp, and the magic carpet ride was pretty entertaining, but the ending is a is downright insulting. Overall, not the best one. I think the title is probably the funniest thing about this cartoon. One of the few actually good things about it. Rating 2 out of 5 stars with the title of OK The Lack Staying Power. Cracked Ice. This is actually a pretty good cartoon. The opening song is done to the tune of a famous classical music piece, which is very interesting. It's the Da 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 But most of it revolves around that pig from At Your Service, Badam. But the gags revolving around him are actually pretty fucking good. There's this magnet that comes up toward the climax. The magnet starts to get stuck to a fish, and it leads to some pretty fucking good gags surrounding it. I like how the pig is not really an antagonist like he was in At Your Service, Madame. He's just more of a bumbling fool. I honestly kind of prefer this. It's actually a good one. You should watch it. Rating 4 out of 5 stars with the title of Awesome. A Feud There Was. This one feels very similar to When I You Who. This one is not quite as good as that one, but it does have its moments. Sure, it starts out pretty boring with the men just sleeping and being lazy, but once the feud actually begins, there are some pretty decent gags. Including a really good fourth wall break when one guy says, in a cartoon picture you can get away with anything. Wow, he's actually right. Which is why it's so funny. Anyway, the main problem I have with, with it is that there is a character that tries to stop the men from fighting. It's Elmer Fudd. I know that Elmer Fudd was different in these in this era of cartoons, but he eventually d becomes became a villain, and honestly, he was never likable even in this era. Credit where it's due, he does end up suffering because of it, because it's honestly pretty and it's honestly pretty therapeutic. Pacifism begets weakness. I prefer When I You Who, but this one is not bad either. Rating 3 out of 5 stars with the title of Worth Watching. Porky and Wacky Land. This is actually a pretty fucking good one. I love the setup of Porky going on a random adventure to capture the last dodo bird ever. Sure, the middle kind of crawls with some random ass jokes revolving around singing and dancing, but if it, it eventually gets back on track when Porky finally finds the, le the dodo bird. There are some really abstract visuals and excellent slapstick gags. It is a really fucking great and artistic sequence of events. But the ending is just priceless. Definitely worth seeing. Rating 4 out of 5 stars with the title of Awesome. Little Poncho Vanilla. This one I'm kind of mixed on. The beginning kind of feels like I want to be a sailor, although not as good. Maybe that has something to do with the fact that bullfighting is much more of a questionable thing to get into than us being a sailor. But I have to give credit where it's due. The final portion of the cartoon has some decent slapstick and some really damn good energy. 
I guess it's kind of interesting that the main character, Pancho, does succeed in the end. Good for him, too bad his cartoon is not really one that I would rewatch anytime soon. A lot, a lot of it is kind of corny. Rating 2 out of 5 stars with the title of OK but lacks staying power. Porky's Naughty Nephew. Gotta be honest, I'm not the biggest fan of this one. The premise is that Porky has to watch over his nephew while hanging at the beach. But the problem is, his nephew keeps fucking with him. Although sometimes he is in, in immediate danger. It's pretty weird. Also, the second half of it focuses on a race, and none of the gags are that great. It also has a pretty fucking weird ending. I feel like this cartoon could have been better than it really is. Rating 2 out of 5 stars with the title of OK But Lacks Staying Power. Johnny Smith and Poker Huntus. This one is kind of a meh cartoon. It starts out pretty fucking boring with a slow pace and weak gags. Basically, Egghead is playing Johnny Smith. It does get a little bit better when a really good joke about getting tickets to a football game in the 1620s. But they have a joke that tells the audience that they're going to skip the chase because they can only do a s ooh, seven minutes. That is not a fucking excuse to skip the, the chase. Well, at least they're admitting that it's this cartoon is kind of lame. But yeah, the later gags are not that funny. Just because it it's breaking the fourth wall doesn't mean it's funny. But I will give them credit for at least putting more effort into telling jokes. I will say it's not like the jokes don't exist, don't even exist like in buddy cartoons. But gotta be honest, the ending is pretty fucking bad. I guess this is where the myth of Pocahontas, Pocahontas and uh, John Smith being lovers originated from. But considering that the Disney Pocahontas is widely considered one of the weaker movies, that's not really a good influence. Not one of the better cartoons. Rating 2 out of 5 stars with the title of OK But Lacks Staying Power. Porky in Egypt. This is actually not that bad of a cartoon. I really do like the opening gag surrounding life in Egypt. But a majority of the cartoon is about Porky and the camel getting hot from the sun and heating up. It gets so fucking hot that the camel starts hallucinating. He starts seeing shit that isn't there and it acting all weird. I will say it's kind of charming. I wouldn't say this is exactly my cup of tea, but it's better than some of the weirdness in fish tales. Overall, a decent cartoon. Rating 3 out of 5 stars with the title of Worth Watching. You're in Education. This is another cartoon that's just a bunch of book, magazine and book covers coming to life and doing vaudeville acts with virtually no plot. If anything, this cartoon shares a lot of similarities to Have You Got Any Castles? Although this is like a lamer version of that cartoon. The singing in this one is too fucking flowery for my liking. This is not... There is not really very interesting imagery or gags. I may not have been totally in love with the ending of have you got any castles? But it was a damn sight better than this cartoon's ending. I wouldn't call this cartoon bad. It's just one of, it's just one that's not really worth remembering either. Rating two out of five stars with the title of OK But Lacks Staying Power. The Night Watchman. Who would have guessed that we would have a cartoon where the cat is the hero and the mice are the villains? Usually it's the other way around, but I am fucking glad we have one. Anyway, it's about a cat being a night guard of the house for his father. A bunch of mice come in and eat all the food in the kitchen. They sing a song, because of course they do. This one is one of the more bouncy and energetic songs of the era, so I won't complain that much. I love the part where the cat ad shouts, QUIET! like Mel Blanc would. The final part of this cartoon is fucking genius. It has a cat it has the cat go from being a pussy, no pun intended, to a full-fledged fighter. It has plenty of slapstick punches and I fucking love it. 
Just when you think there's no more violence, more comes. I love violence. Yeah. Anyway, this is a pretty good cartoon. Rating 4 out of 5 stars with the title of Awesome. The Daffy Doc. As the first cartoon to have Daffy being the main character, it's not a bad start. Daffy is working to become a doctor, but is still playing assistant to Mr. Quack. But Daffy doesn't want to do that anymore. By far the best in the cartoon is when Mr. Quack says, that duck uh, doesn't know the seriousness of the situation. Yet he pulls back the cloth and it is revealed to be doing an operation on a football. The image of Daffy's head and body inflating will stay in my head for a goddamn long time. The ending has Daffy trying to get a patient to prove his worth. He tries to make it look like Porky is sick and in the end goes all, all out fucking bizarre. And I honestly wouldn't have it any other way. Pretty good cartoon. Rating 4 out of 5 stars with the title of Awesome. Daffy Duck in Hollywood. This is a fucking great Daffy cartoon. It not only has some really fucking great gags involving the hilarious screwball Daffy, it also has some interesting subtext about movie directing. It could be a commentary on how many directors try way too hard to be an e Oscar winners, but have their movies but have movies that are pretty goddamn corny in the grand scheme of things. Sure, a lot of it is Daffy fucking up the production of the movie, but let's really think about the movie he is making. It's just a corny romance movie. When Daffy replaces the movie with a really fucking weird but hilarious live action movie, and it does get greenlit. Hmm. Sometimes a ridiculous concept can turn out to be really good. It makes no sense, but sometimes that's kind of what makes it brilliant. But of course, that's all just my interpretation. It's a great cartoon. Rating 5 out of 5 stars with the title of Epic. Porky the Gob. This is not a bad cartoon. However, to be honest, I'm not the biggest fan of the opening. It has a bunch of singing and and gags that are so fucking random, but that I don't even know what the fuck to say about them. But the cartoon gets better later on. The climax involving the pirate submarine trying to shoot down the ship that Porky is working on, that, that's what it involves. It has some decent action and a really good bingo gag. I find it odd that it cuts to what happens to Porky after the climax really abruptly, but the ending is satisfying all things considered. Not the greatest cartoon, but still worth seeing at least once. Rating 3 out of 5 stars with the title of Worth Watching. Count Me Out. Now we have a cartoon that is honestly not that great. I don't think egghead cartoons are doomed to fail. Hell, I enjoyed Cinderella Meets Fella, and that has egghead in it. Besides, the worst they get is mediocre. The gags with the, record, with the record player almost almost talking to Egghead as if he's training to be a boxer are mildly amusing. But when the boxing match with that Biff Stew dog starts, it's honestly unimpressive. We have some, some, we have seen these gags before and they weren't that great to be when they were first told. The ending also feels like it was bitter towards the sport of boxing itself. Not the worst, but if a bunch of friends were going to watch this cartoon, they could count me out. Rating 2 out of 5 stars with the title of OK But Lack Staying Power. The Mice Will Play. This cartoon is pretty fucking lame. It's another one where the mice are the good guys and the cat as the villain. After watching The Night Watchmen, that is not going to be impressive anymore. But that's not the only reason it's lame. Susie Mouse has a really fucking annoying voice. There are hardly any gags, and the few that do come up are not that great. It also ends with a song. 
Though I will say it's one of the more tolerable songs in this collection of shorts, but the ending is not my cup of tea. So I don't really see to, any reason to watch this, unless you're, of course, you're doing what I'm doing. Rating, 2 out of 5 stars with the title of OK Black Staying Power. The Lone Stranger and Porky. While not the greatest western cartoon, it still has some decent elements to it. This is a parody of The Lone Ranger. The gags range from decent to actually pretty good. I like the radio gag with the Lone Stranger's assistant. There is some nice anachronism and a reference to the fact that The Lone Ranger was originally a radio show. The fight between the Lone Stranger and the bandit is pretty entertaining. I would have liked it if Porky played more of a role in this short. He doesn't really do that much. Overall, I don't like the last part of the cartoon, but it's still worth checking out. Rating 3 out of 5 stars with the title of Worth Watching. Doggone Modern. This is a definitely a better dog cartoon than Dog Days. It's about two dogs who enter a futuristic house. I fucking love the fact that much of this cartoon has no dialogue. It just revolves around visual gags. Most of them are really fucking good and funny. It has some decent slapstick at parts and even some actually creative music based gags with the built in orchestra machine. I love how when one dog gets repeatedly washed by dishes, it doesn't just play the same animation loop over and over again. It cuts to the other dog and his shenanigans. What makes it work is that those are pretty different and entertaining. It's a pretty fucking good one. Rating 4 out of 5 stars with the title of Awesome. It's an Ill Wind. This is actually a pretty good cartoon. It has Porky and his pet duck and dog fishing for only for it to start raining on the pier that they're fishing on. When they get inside, there are some pretty fucking good slapstick themed shenanigans. It is just so fucking chaotic with some real energy and it is pretty good. Admittedly, a bit slow. Admittedly, it starts out a bit slow, but gets going really fast. The ending punchline, no pun intended, is also really damn good. Rating 4 out of 5 stars with the title of Awesome. Hammature Night is just another va vaudeville act compilation, and it's one of the more eh ones. The one difference is that it has a judge that rings bells and makes a performer fall if he doesn't like the act. Ringing a bell at the bug with that fucking annoying high pitched voice that is incomprehensible I can understand, but he rings the bell at an animal playing a piano rendition of The Merry-Go-Round Broke Down, which is in my eyes the best act in this thing. What the fuck? There's no pleasing this guy, is there? Anyway, there's also a fox who tries to recite a famous speech from Hamlet, but he gets thrown in, but he gets a fruit thrown at him when he starts reciting it, which is just fucking cruel. I would have loved him to recite it a little bit more. It would have been better than the reenactment of Romeo and Juliet scene that comes later. Although, to be fair, that one is mocked too. While there are a few good gags, a few good jokes here in this cartoon, as a whole, it's just not really that entertaining. Rating 2 out of 5 stars with the title of OK But Lacks Staying Power. Robin Hood Makes Good. I can't believe I'm saying this, but this is actually a decent cartoon. It has a nice story about three squirrels who love the story of Robin Hood. They act it out, but one squir squirrel is sick of always playing the villain. But he gets a chance to become a, um, the hero when the brothers are kidnapped by a fox who happens to be Maid Marianne. Sure, the voices are pretty fucking dopey, and the climax is not as good as it could have been, but I felt that this one had more effort, put more effort into telling a story than some of the other Mary Melodies cartoons. 
And hey, who doesn't love the Robin Hood story? Or at least hasn't heard of it. Rating 3 out of 5 stars with a title of Worth Watching. Porky's Tire Trouble. I'm not the biggest fan of this one. Having Porky work at a tire factory is a good concept, but it's not really what about that. It's more about Porky trying to hide his dog from his boss. Most of, most of the first half of the cartoon is just not that funny. With some pretty fucking weak visual gags. I guess it is kind of clever that the boss reveals that the reason he doesn't want the dog in the factory is because he hates dogs. It just makes him come across as a bastard. Which is oddly a good thing because considering the climax is about him getting his just desserts with slapstick gags. Although, gotta be honest, the slapstick gags are just not as good as they could have been. They're not bad, but I have seen better. Overall, it's just mediocre. Rating, 2 out of 5 stars with the title of OK But Lacks Staying Power. Gold Rush Days. So the premise of this one is that a dog drives his car in a desert and runs into another dog who works at a gas station. The dog in the car says that he's looking for gold, but the dog who owns the gas station tells him that there is no gold anywhere in that area where he is going. It cuts to him back in the Old West. Apparently whenever someone said there was gold, everyone started digging in but found no gold. That is surprisingly accurate to how it was, it was in the actual Old West. Everyone dug for gold back then, but they never found any gold. This is a continual pattern in the cartoon. This might be the first cartoon to have characters walking off a cliff only and only falling at a certain point. You know, that gag. Not a fan of the music in the mining cave, However, the ending punchline is pretty clever, or two, in addition to that other gag. Not my favorite, but definitely worth seeing at least once. Rating 3 out of 5 stars with the title of Worth Watching. A Day at the Zoo. I actually like this cartoon. It's kind of a mockumentary about a zoo. What I really like is that the narrator is a character in the cartoon. He actually talks to some of the other animals some of the characters in the cartoon. Also, the gags revolving around zoo animals are actually pretty funny, including a really good joke about a wild cat. The zoo actually has a good variety of animals in it, including monkeys, ostriches, a deer, skunks, ew, elephants, panthers, birds, rabbits, and of course, a lion. This cartoon makes a strong case of why you don't want to fuck with a lion. It's a good one. You should watch it. Rating 4 out of 5 stars with the title of Awesome. Porky's Movie Mystery. I actually like this one. It is about a mysterious person that is wreaking havoc on Hollywood. The gag with Frankenstein is pretty was pretty good. The gag with the Invisible Man eating an apple was also pretty good. Sure, Porky only appears in the second half of the cartoon as Mr. Moto. Yeah, I can definitely see why they only used Mr. Moto once. But I have to admit, the climax in the ending punchline were pretty damn good. So overall, it's entertaining. Rating 4 out of 5 stars with the title of Awesome. Presto Changeo. This is actually a pretty good cartoon. Much like Doggone Modern, there's almost no dialogue and focuses mainly on visual gags, with actually the two dogs from that cartoon. Most of it revolves around one dog being fucked with by a rabbit, almost like a silent version of Bugs Bunny. The other, is, other has a sentient rope that leads him into a chest of magic tricks, each of which, each of the magic gags offer surreal imagery that and it is fucking weird and kind of funny to see the dog hiccuping balloons. But the ending punchline, no, no, not punchline, but straight up punch, is satisfying to see. 
Overall, it's a good one. Rating 4 out of 5 stars with the title of Awesome. Chicken Jitters. This one is like a watered down Porky's poultry plant. It starts out with a bunch of the boring and mindless shit from that cartoon. But then a fox comes in and tries to eat the chickens. Why the fuck are you making a fox a villain? Foxes eat birds. That's just the way they are. And hey, I like to eat chickens too. Anyway, the climax is not as entertaining, is not nearly as entertaining as the one in, in uh, Por Porky's Poultry Plant. I think I was a little too harsh on that cartoon in that in retrospect. But Chicken Jitters is not really a bad cartoon, it's just kind of bland and not that engaging. Rating 2 out of 5 stars with the title of OK But Lack Staying Power. Bars and Stripes Forever. This is actually a pretty fucking good cartoon. It uses a lot of dark humor. I mean, it's set at a prison, so it's it fits so fucking well. Much of the cartoon is angry and violent, and if that's your thing, you will enjoy this. But there are some really funny gags. Sure, it's a bit random and there's almost no plot, but the jokes are actually really funny, so I will let that slide. The climax involves the shootout, and it is pretty damn good. I found this one better than Buddy the G-Man because it's just more about how prisons are. Not fun to be in, which they that's how they should be. And well, it's just more well made. The title of Awesome. Daffy Duck and the Dinosaur. This one is not quite a, as good as some of the other Daffy cartoons but we have looked at, but it's still pretty good. First of all, I do like the concept of a caveman and his pet dinosaur trying to eat Daffy. I also really like how the dinosaur is named Fido and kind of acts like a dog, so it makes sense. Daffy does his usual shtick of fucking with the caveman. Sure, I would have liked there to be more slapstick toward the end, but there is a bit of it in the beginning, and to be fair, the ending punchline is straight up pitch black humor which is pretty fucking shocking. But I kind of like it in a morbid way. It's good. Rating 4 out of 5 stars with the title of Awesome. Porky and Tea Biscuit. This one is decent too. The main issue that I have with it is that the events kind of happen not really naturally, but more because the plot demands it or the characters are just plain stupid. Like for example, when Porky says 11 o'clock, the person running the auction thinks that he's betting $11 for the prize. When Porky sees that the prize was, it's just a sick horse named Tea Biscuit. When Porky demands his money back, the dog acts like he didn't even hear him, hear what Porky said. This would be funny if it weren't for the fact that, this sick, that a sick horse is not funny at all. That being said, the race is genuinely pr pretty entertaining. It has some pretty fucking good gags, and the shot of Tea Biscuit trying to pass a horse's feet is very memorable. I even like how how this sh this short plays. Uh, she was an acrobat's daughter in the background at, at one point. Well, not the best. I would say it's worth watching. Rating 3 out of 5 stars with the title of Worth Watching. Thugs with Dirty Mugs. I may piss some people off with the, my review, but this one... Of the, but I don't really like this cartoon. Now, I don't think it's horrible. I don't think it's one of the greatest. There are a few gags that did get a laugh out of me, like how the killer robs the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, it goes on from there, national banks. Even the audience member joke was kind of clever, but the main issue that I have with it is that it is that the worst national bank joke could have been a lot funnier, and most of the cartoon is just not that funny or entertaining. Also, the climax and ending were pretty fucking bad, to be quite honest. I expected a lot more from a clever title. 
Rating 2 out of 5 stars with the title of OK But Lacks Staying Power. Christopher Columbus Jr. Okay, now we have a really fucking bad one. First of all, why the fuck is this called Christopher Columbus Jr. when Porky more or less plays Christopher Columbus? Second of all, Christopher Columbus didn't discover America. If anything, he discovered the Bahamas. Also, he was not the one that discovered that the Earth was round. That discovery, he, that was discovered way before him. But it was made in, the, in 1939 when the myth was still widely accepted, so I guess I will let that slide. However, what I will not let slide is the fact that this cartoon is just not fucking funny. The only gag, the only joke that actually got a laugh out of me was the 39 days joke. Everything else is either boring, mindless shit, or just jokes that were done in, better in other cartoons. Let's just say history has not been kind to this cartoon, and there's nothing of any fucking value here. Rating 1 out of 5 stars with the title of Horrible. Naughty But Mice. This one, this was the first cartoon to feature Sniffles the Mouse. Honestly, I don't like Sniffles. He is not as bad as Buddy, but he's still annoying and kind of lame to be quite honest. Now the cartoon starts off actually pretty good. It focuses on Sniffles trying to sneak into a closed drugstore and at night at night to get some medicine to help him with his cold. There's there's no dialogue. But once Sniffles starts talking, the cartoon goes downhill really fast. Sniffles' voice is so fucking annoying, and his singing of a song is even worse. The climax is also pretty lame. It involves a cat trying to eat Sniffles. And you know how much, and you all know how much I love that. Anyway, I didn't care for this one. Rating 2 out of 5 stars with the title of OK But Lack Staying Power. Believe It or Else. This is kind of like Ripley's Believe It or Not. It's like a parody of Ripley's Believe It or Not, but of course played comedically. Believe it or else, <laughs> there are some funny gags in here. Like the wishing well joke, the optical illusion gag, which, which encourages the viewer to close one eye while the square disappears and reappears, which is harder than it looks. Oh, and even the mice, the men singing on the moon actually have a good payoff of a joke. However, there there were some pretty weak gags that are not were not that funny, like the birth of a baby. Yes, I'm spelling it B E R T H, because you know the film, you know if the film showed the other kind of the other kind, it would have not have flown. And honestly, I don't know which would have been worse. The other bad ones are just kind of boring and uninspired. However, the ending punchline is really good though, so it's a decent watch. Rating 3 out of 5 stars with the title of Worth Watching. Polar Pals. This is the first good Porky cartoon in a long time. It has a great premise with Porky in the Arctic. The beginning has some really good gags about waking up while being in the Arctic and, and the polar bears. The only problem I have with Ev is that whole section with the singing and dancing. I'm just tired of this shit. But it really gets better with a pretty fucking good shootout with Porky and some bastard trying to sell seals as clothes, which is really fucking sick when you think about it. The ending punchline is also really dark, but I somehow really love it. It's Rating 4 out of 5 stars with the title of Awesome. Hobo Gadget Band. This one revolves around hobos. Well, more accurately, it revolves around hobos that sing and dance. That's really all they do in this cartoon. Why the hell did Warner Brothers desperately want to bring back this shit when it seemed like the other cartoons were trying to move away from that? Whatever. I guess I kind of like the song toward the end. Not only was it pretty good, and even it even had some self-awareness in the lyrics. 
and even some quirky instruments. But the ending is just confusing. The actual ending. So overall, just not really my thing. Rating 2 out of 5 stars with the title of OK But Lacks Staying Power. Scalp Trouble. This is a great cartoon. It has Porky and Daffy in the army during the western times, I think. It has them fighting off the Indians. But I swear, it's actually really funny. It has really, it has really fucking good slapstick gags. Including one where an Indian uses another's legs to shoot a bow and arrow. The one with the dog, who may or may not have shot some Indians, is also really fucking great. But overall, Daffy's screwball antics will never fail to make me laugh. I don't give a damn if this cartoon would not fly to eye if it were made today. It's just really great. At least they don't show actual scalping. Rating 5 out of 5 stars with the title of Epic. Old Glory. This is actually a really good patriotic cartoon. It's not necessarily funny, but I don't think it was intended to be funny. It is a cartoon that makes a case for of what, signif what the significance of the Pledge of Allegiance has in America. It also really makes a case for how important American history really is. I feel like this is a more important cartoon now than ever before. One of the things I like about it is that um, when Uncle Sam tells Porky about the history of America during the Revolutionary War, you don't hear what he's saying. It's just a montage of imagery relating to it. It also has many words that flash on the screen associated with it, so the audience can fill in the blanks. I like this because the cartoon could have easily have been really flowery in its dialogue, but it took a unique approach and just had very little, if any, dialogue. That is fucking amazing. I also think that the rotoscoping on the historical figures is really good. Sure, he kind of skimmed through the rest of the history, but he did quote the uh, Gettysburg Address by Abraham Lincoln, so that's something. This ends with Porky reciting the original Pledge of Allegiance. When I mean the original, I mean the one that was made before the 1950s. The, this one does not include One Nation Under God. That is the better version. I don't give a fuck what anyone says. But the reason I find this cartoon more important now is that people really don't appreciate the freedom they have now and or even trying to get rid of it. People are more cowardly than they have ever been before. That scares me. I really don't want America to die. I love this country. I hate the people running it, but that's different. I criticize them because I want these things in this country to improve. That's all I want. Rating 5 out of 5 stars with the title of Epic. Porky's Picnic. This one is alright. This is one of the first appearances of Petunia Pig in a long time. She has a total overhaul. She is a bit more likable in this one. The same cannot be said for Pinky. Pinky is an, a total bastard who acts without thinking. Yeah, he is a baby, so that kind of comes with the territory, but he outright wants to cut a squirrel's head off for no reason. He also tries to hit Porky once again for no reason. There are some decent gags here, and the climax at the zoo is pretty enjoyable. I guess the biggest gripe that I have with it is that it can be a bit flowery at times. But it is a masterpiece compared to Buddy's Day Out. That's for damn sure. Rating 3 out of 5 stars with a title of Worth Watching. Dangerous Dan McFoo. This is a good one. It has excellent fucking gags. Including the piano typewriter gag. A section where they slow down the cartoon for some shots at blows from the characters fighting for the girl. The gun fireworks resulting the gun fireworks, the resting gag. Admittedly, the only problem that I have with it is some of the gags before 
we get to the plot about the two dogs fighting over a female dog were kind of lame, to be quite honest. But once we get to that storyline, it is just pure fucking chaos. And it that is just wonderful. The ending punchline is also really good. Definitely worth seeing. Rating, 4 out of 5 stars with the title of Awesome. Snowman's Land. Honestly, this cartoon is not that great. It starts out... It start, it stars a dog who actually has a, the same voice as Goofy. Seriously, if you watch this cartoon and you hear his voice, you will not stop noticing. The only problem is that this character is so stupid. He technically doesn't even volunteer, but even when he goes out to start off the criminal, he is just too stupid. His stupidity is not even funny. It's just really aggravating. He saw a picture of the criminal. How did how did he not know that that person and he he was talking to was the criminal? Honestly, the three stooges would have a better chance at stopping him. I mean, the cartoon has a good idea, but it's not executed well, and it's just not that entertaining. Rating two out of five stars with the title of okay but lacks staying power. Wise Quacks. I hate to say it, but I don't like this. I don't think this cartoon is all that great. First of all, I am not in love with the idea of Daffy becoming a father. Especially since, as far as I can tell, this is the only time we see his wife and children. Second of all, you would think if that if Daffy drank a lot of corn juice, which is metaphorically alcohol, it would have been and even more funny. But no, he is slower and doesn't have the same funny antics as before. The ending is also pretty fucking weird, but not in a good way. I wouldn't say this cartoon is bad, It's definitely, but it's definitely not one that I would watch again. It pains me to call a Daffy cartoon mediocre or bad, but I have to this time. Rating 2 out of 5 stars with the title of OK But Lack Staying Power. Harem Scarum. Here we have another cartoon with a prototype Bugs Bunny, although he acts more like the screwball version of Daffy Duck. Not that that's necessarily a bad thing, I enjoy that. I enjoy hearing his zany voice and him fucking with everyone, and generally causing mayhem. It's just hilarious. Although I do kind of wish it was Daffy considering the last cartoon, but this is fine too. The rabbit even guilt trips the hunter into Hunter, which would become a recurring theme with Bugs and later later on. But the ending is just pure insanity and I fucking dig it. Rating 4 out of 5 stars with the title of Awesome. Detouring America. It's another one of these travel log parodies. This time it's taking a tour of America. It does show that America had, does have some interesting places. As for the jokes themselves, they're a mixed bag. The cow punching gag was funny. The hitchhiking gag from Alaska to Virginia was not. The traffic log gag was funny. The Indian gags were not. And they do take up a good portion of it, so it's, so, it's goddamn annoying. But there are more good gags than bad for what that's worth. Overall, I would call this the best. I wouldn't, overall, I wouldn't call this the best, but it's kind of entertaining. And maybe this deserved an Oscar nomination considering in the other cartoons at the time probably weren't that noteworthy or even less noteworthy. Rating? Three out of five stars with the title of Worth Watching. Little Brother Rat, another Sniffles cartoon. This time Sniffles is in a competition to find shit like whiskers and a cat and an owl egg in order to win a, win a contest. Much of it, much like the last one, it's this is a little too cutesy for my liking. The only gag that I thought was kind of funny was the owl flipping in and out of whispering and yelling. At first, it, I was 
siding with the owl on this one. Because, well, Sniffles is stealing an owl's child just to win a contest. How, ex how exactly can I root for a character like this? But I guess he redeems himself by protecting the l little owl from a cat. I guess I will let that slide, but overall, whenever Warner Brothers tries to emulate the Disney style, they're kind of lame. Rating 2 out of 5 stars with a title of worth okay but lacks staying power. Porky's Hotel. I don't know what it is about this one, but I don't find the gags in this one to be all that great. The gag with the duck talking too slow and inquiring about things is really dumb. There are also there's also a joke about trying to swat a fly near a goat's injured leg that is just cruel, even by the standards of the cartoons we looked at so far. Like like that's not funny. That's just pain that's just fucking painful. The John Smith gag is also dumb as fuck. I don't know, there's ideas for jokes, but maybe and maybe this is subjective, but I can't tell I can't tell you I can tell but I can tell you I didn't laugh that much. And most the most I got out of it was a few chuckles. So yeah, not one of the better quirky cartoons. Rating 2 out of 5 stars with a title of OK But Lacks Staying Power. Sue me. It's a ripoff of Porky the Rainmaker, only with Indians as the main characters. Seriously, it recycles the story almost beat for beat. This should be a surprise to no one, but I prefer Porky the Rainmaker to this one. I don't even... I don't even think I need to explain why. I mean, it's a good story, but I prefer it being told with Porky than with Native Americans. Rating 2 out of 5 stars with the title of OK But Lacks Staying Power. Land of the Midnight Fun. It's another travel log parody cartoon. I actually kind of dig these. This one is fine. It has some pretty good jokes, like the rubbing noses gag, the timber wolf gag, and the gag with the guy who the ship crew thinks is in trouble, but he but he's really just passed out for being with his blonde lover or something. It could be from fucking her, but I don't know. But anyway, I really do like the, I really do dig the uh, winter aesthetic. It looks really fucking good. I even kind of like the ice skating segments. Segment. It has some nice music and visuals. The ending gag was kind of weak, but overall I found, found a lot to enjoy about this one. Not the best, but had a decent time with it. Rating 3 out of 5 stars with the title of Worth Watching. Jeepers Creepers. This is actually a pretty good cartoon. It's one that is perfect to watch on Halloween. It has some pretty damn good gags. Like when the lightning zaps a piece of the house that looks like a chicken, and it turns it into ch cooked chicken. I even like the section when the ghost sings a, hunt, a haunting we will go. It's a pretty funny song. It's also worth, worth noting that this is the third cartoon to feature the voice actor for Goofy. He plays the ghost. It is pretty fucking distracting when he isn't using his voice to voice Goofy. Although, you could interpret it as being the ghost of Goofy, which actually makes it pretty funny. Anyway, the climax involving the ghost fucking with Porky and Porky just finally discovering that the ghost discovering the ghost is pretty goddamn wild, but in an entertaining way. I even like Porky's car or with the uh, six and the seven eighths. It is so fucking weird, but I love it. Overall, a, a good goddamn cartoon. Rating four out of five stars with the title of Awesome. Naughty Neighbors. This was the last cartoon to feature Petunia Pig, and she does not go out on a high note. Yeah, I don't like this cartoon. It has way too fucking many saccharine moments, and the music is overly sentimental, and so are the moments with Porky and Petunia getting all lovey-dovey. It doesn't help that Petunia has a fucking annoying voice, but I also don't agree with, this se with its sentiment. 
It's one of those cartoons that says, pacifism is the best way to solve everything. But life is never that goddamn simple. There are plenty of times when violence is the answer. If someone continually tortures you and doesn't stop or care at all about what they're doing, then you should not be fucking friends with them. Your abuser is not worth caring about. Or if they insult you in a horrific way, then yeah, punch them in the face. Besides, this cartoon is going to age poorly considering the amount of war propaganda cartoons that will come in the 1940s. So I can't think of a single goddamn reason to watch this cartoon, even if you agree with the sentiment. Rating 1 out of 5 stars with the title of Horrible, The Little Lion Hunter. This is the first cartoon to feature Inky and in, in the Mina Bird. Honestly, both characters are not that great. The bird has almost no personality, and Inky not only has a pretty racist design, he is pretty boring, although not as boring as Buddy. Then again, any Looney Tunes character is better than Buddy. This cartoon has no dialogue, but unlike the cartoons with the dogs, the guys in this one are just not that funny or interesting. I do admire its attempt to be artistic, but it's still not that engaging or entertaining. The ending is also a what the fuck moment. It's better than the last one, but honestly, not by much. Rating 2 out of 5 stars with the title of OK Black Sting Power. The Good Egg. This is another one that's kind of meh. There are virtually no gags. It's just a fucking flowery story about a chicken that can't lay eggs. Well, she's about to go to the river to do what I, is implied to be suicide. She finds an egg. So she lays it only to, re to be revealed to be a turtle. When the turtle tries to play with the other chicks, the other chicks laugh at him and he cries. While the other chicks play pirates, the turtle notices them drowning and he goes and saves them. Only to then, only, only then do the chicks let them let him play with them. I will say I do appreciate the cartoon for not being afraid to be depressing at parts, although to be honest, I can't really relate to the hen not being able to lay eggs. The turtle's depression I can relate more to. But overall, I find this I find this story to be way too uncomfortable and saccharine for my taste. This is not a fucking cartoon that is rewatchable. Rating 2 out of 5 stars with the title of OK But Lack Staying Power. Pied Piper Porky. This one is not quite the best Porky cartoon, but it's actually not that bad either. The beginning is kind of boring, but once we get to Porky actually playing the Pied Piper, it actually starts getting good. I do like the jazz music that plays during it, but once the, the rat comes in and fucks with Porky, there's a there's a decent chase there's some decent chase gags. Most of which involve the cat. I really think the nine lives gag is pretty damn good. The ending is kind of stupid, but I enjoy but I did find a lot to enjoy about this one. It's kind of res reminiscent of Tom and Jerry, though it predates it by a few years. Rating three out of five stars with the title of Worth Watching. Fresh Fish, another nature documentary parody, but this time it deals with ocean life. This one is not quite as good as A Day at the Zoo, however, there are still some decent, pretty decent gags in here. My favorites would be the jokes about the shark names and one fish that has a book that is called How to Be Alone and Like It. I think a lot of people need to read that book. Sure, there were some pretty weak jokes, like the first joke and the uh, payoff of the running gag with the fish with the two heads, but it has a, has a pretty damn good ending punchline. Overall, a decent cartoon. Rating 3 out of 5 stars with the title of Worth Watching. Fagin's Freshman. And just when I thought that Looney Tunes were, getting, were going to get better, we get another fucking bad one. God damn it. Okay, the reason this one is bad is because it's about a kitten who doesn't like uh, any of the lame songs his, he, 
that his mother and his sisters sing and loves guns, but he is sent to his room with no supper. That alone is fucking cruel, but it gets worse. He has a dream that he gets caught up with some criminals, and this horrible dream turns out makes him not love guns anymore. You know I take issue with that. It basically implies that people who love guns are criminals, which is not true at fucking all. I love guns, and I am a law-abiding citizen. I find it hypocritical that many of the Looney Tunes cartoons have characters who use guns and actually succeed, and then have a cartoon discouraging loving guns. When you write, you make absolutely sure that you are communicating exactly what you want to communicate. If not, you make you end up making people who are ex or who are pretty fucking harmless in the grand scheme of things look absolutely horrendous. That is one of the most despicable things that you can do. Rating 1 out of 5 stars with the title of Horrible. Porky the Giant Killer. You would think this cartoon is about Porky trying to kill a giant, but it's actually not about that. I mean, there is a giant, but it's not about Porky running into... It's about, it's about Porky running into the giant's infant son. However, the son continually annoys Porky. I feel Porky's pain. I do like the gags with Porky playing the piano and singing the alphabet and changing the lyrics at the end. But the biggest problem I have that I have with the cartoon is that Porky is being tormented for no reason, really. Sure, he does get revenge pretty early on, but that element is completely dropped by the end. The climax just features Porky running away from the, from the giant. While this cartoon is a better idea than the last one, I feel like this one just doesn't didn't know what to do with it. Rating 2 out of 5 stars with the title of OK But Lacks Staying Power. Sniffles and the Bookworm. I have to say this one is actually not that bad. I mean, I, I still wouldn't call this good, mainly, because, mainly due to the fact that the pacing is pretty slow. But there are some things that I do like about it. First of all, the cartoon has only one line of dialogue said by Sniffles. That is a good thing, because Sniffles has a pretty fucking annoying voice. In fact, I think Sniffles would have been a better character if he was just silent throughout all of his cartoons. But unfortunately, that is not the case. Anyway, the plot with the bookworm being afraid of Sniffles and the Frankenstein chase are surprisingly engaging. Another part that I didn't care for was the part when with the singing and dancing in the middle, but you know, I am really getting tired of this shit. You have no idea. It is not as entertaining as it would have been back then. But overall, this is probably the strongest Sniffles cartoon yet. Rating 3 out of 5 stars with the title of Worth Watching. Screwball Football. This is actually a pretty fucking good cartoon. It has pretty fucking good slapstick gags. And just good gags related to football. Most of them really did get a laugh out of me. The pigskin joke is pretty great. The pep talk joke is pretty damn good and actually closer to accurate than you might think. The only joke that I didn't care for was the running gag with the baby eating the ice cream and the adult licking it with him noticing. It's just a really dumb joke. But it ends with a pretty good and actually pretty dark payoff, so I guess I can tolerate it. That's another thing. There are quite a bit of dark jokes in this cartoon, which makes it all the fucking better for me. Finally, we have a good Looney Tunes cartoon. Rating 4 out of 5 stars with the title of Awesome. The Film Fan. This one has a good idea. It's another one of these cartoons that parodies aspect about mo of movie theaters with coming attractions and news and shit like that. But to be honest, it's just not that funny. Most of the gags are pretty weak. The only one that I kind of liked was the Gone On With The Wind parody with the cartoon impression of Clark Gable making another appearance. It was fitting because that when that, that movie came out the same year as that cartoon. 
But other than that, I guess the bloodstream drug is kind of funny, but other than that, nothing. Also, the ending is weird, but not in a good way. It's another one that has a good concept, but they just didn't know how to make it look good on film. Rating 2 out of 5 stars with the title of OK But Lacks Staying Power. The Curious Puppy. It's another one of these cartoons to feature those two dogs, but strangely as antagonists this time. That is a pretty fucking odd decision. Anyway, it's not as good as the first two, but it does have some pretty strong elements. One of, when one of the dogs enters the carnival, it plays a famous, it, play, it plays that famous classical music piece, which is, you know, the one from Cracked Ice. I also do like the part when the dog gets trapped in a popcorn machine and the other dog orders a bag of popcorn. The dog gets salt and butter poured on him. That is absurdly funny. There is not really as as much slapstick as the other ones, and the ending is pretty weird. But this one has plenty to enjoy about it. If you want a short film with dialogue, look elsewhere. Rating 3 out of 5 stars with the title of Worth Watching. Porky's Last Stand. And now we're in the 1940s. This decade starts out with a pretty decent cartoon. You would think that the car this cartoon would be about Porky in some battle, but no, it's actually about Porky having a chicken stand that serves other food besides chicken as well. But Daffy is back, and I was kind of missing him. But there are some decent gags and situations, like it and it also shows the pain of trying to impress your customers, but things getting in the way of your service. Like not having any hamburgers, or having one of your eggs hatch a chicken. Anyway, the ending is pretty bizarre, but overall, it's a major improvement over the last cartoon to feature Daffy. Rating 3 out of 5 stars with the title of Worth Watching. The Early Worm Gets the Bird. Even though this cartoon is not one of the censored 11, it has quite a lot of racial stereotypes that occur throughout. Oh yeah, that's right, it wasn't included in the in the package, much like going to heaven on a mule. But unlike that cartoon, I actually like this cartoon. I will admit the beginning is pretty fucking bad, but once the little black bird, who is clearly a black face character, goes into the field and tries to chase the worm, and the fox gets involved, it actually has some really good energy, and even made me laugh. The part when the fox is stabbed by the bee, and it makes it look like he has blood, is pretty funny and dark. The ending, while not the greatest, is better than I thought it would be. So overall, I would recommend watching it, unless you're easily offended. Rating 4 out of 5 stars with the title of Awesome. Africa Squeaks. This is another mixed bag. Some of the gags are pretty, are actually really funny, and some of them are not. I like the gag with the gorilla who acts like a celebrity of the time, the noisy critters, and the war gag with shooting a bear down. But I'm not a fan of the gag surrounding the natives, or the wolf kicking an elephant and keeping his trunk. That is a stupid gag. It also doesn't help that Toward the end, it goes into some of the singing and dancing shit from the harmonizing era. Thankfully, it's not that long, and there are a few more decent gags. With a large portion of the cartoon, while a large portion of the cartoon is not that great, I did a f enjoy a few of the gags, so I'd say it's decent. Rating 3 out of 5 stars with the title of Worth Watching. Mighty Hunters. God damn it, this is like the third cartoon in a row to feature rampant racial stereotypes that are not part of the uh, Censored Eleven for some reason. Honestly, however, I probably shouldn't complain that much because this is actually one of the more tame portrayals of Indians. In fact, the only dialogue is with the narrator at the beginning and end of the cartoon. I do appreciate what they're going for. I will say... There are some good moments, like the dog wagging his tail near war drums. Uh, 
I also like the bit with the kid fucking with a donkey. The, this is another cartoon to feature asexual nudity, which I am shocked that the Hayes office let slide. But everything else is honestly pretty boring. But I will be generous and say it's better than the previous cartoons to feature exclusively on Indians. For what's that? For what that's fucking worth. Rating 3 out of 5 stars with the title of Worth Watching. Busy Bakers. This is actually not a bad cartoon. It's about the owner of a bakery shop whose business is, doing, is going so horribly that he can't even sell one item for a cent. And it's the only item he has. That makes me legitimately depressed. And I, I could not imagine being in his position. I can't help but feel so fucking bad for him. So a bunch of workers sneak in while the owner is sleeping and start making not just bread, but pies, cakes, and shit like that. I actually kind of like the song that, that plays when they're making everything. The pumpkin pie bit is pretty good. Um, what they did seemed to work because the owner starts started making a lot of money. The ending gag, however, is pretty fucking weak, and to be honest, but it doesn't really ruin the cartoon because the owner still kind of won in the end. Rating 3 out of 5 stars with a title of Worth Watching. Alibaba Bound. This is a pretty good one. I really dig, I guess I really dig the Middle Eastern setting. I will admit the cartoon starts off pretty boring, but the second half of it is just fucking straightforward action and creative cartoon gags. While Boulevard Deer from De Bronx has a pretty good story, this cartoon has fucking energy and is much more entertaining. The ending gag... Oh. I also do kind of like the boner gun gag. The ending gag is pure perfection, and I could not have ended the cartoon better. Sure, I do prefer some of the Middle Eastern themed cartoons a little bit more, but this one is still pretty good. Rating 4 out of 5 stars with the title of Awesome. Elmer's Candid Camera. This is the first cartoon to feature Bugs Bunny, although he is not actually named Bugs Bunny yet. But I will call him Bugs anyway. This is also where we see the new version of Elmer Fudd and is closer to how we typically envision him as. Is it any good? Well, I kind of like the premise. Elmer gets a camera and tries to photograph wildlife. I like how this cartoon, you can see where both Bugs and Elmer are coming from. I can identify with Elmer wanting to test out his new camera, but I can also identify with Bugs not really wanting to be filmed. Filming so somebody with anything without their consent nowadays in some jurisdictions would be a felony, but even back then, it might have been considered a dick move. This cartoon also has bug, Bugs guilt tripping Elmer, which will be will be a, more common later in these cartoons. I will say that it is kind of slow, but still has some energy to it, even though Bugs has a similar voice to Daffy. Rating 3 out of 5 stars with the title of Worth Watching. Pilgrim Porky. This one is not the greatest. I do kind of like the, the idea of doing a travel log parody with the voyage of the pilgrims. And some of the gags are kind of clever, but that is really all this cartoon has going for it. A lot of the gags are pretty boring. Some of them might be considered in poor taste too. It doesn't help that the ending gag, ending jokes are pretty damn stupid, and not even in a funny way. Of course, Porky wears a pilgrim, but hat. Of course, Porky wears a pilgrim hat, but that's to be expected. Overall, it could have been a lot better. Rating two out of five stars with the title of "Okay, but lacks staying power." Cross country detours. This is actually a pretty good cartoon. Yeah, it's another one of these mockumentary-style cartoons, but much like A Day at the Zoo, 
The jokes in this one are actually pretty fucking good. I like the gag with the firefighters, the don't feed the bear, ga bear gag, the dogs, the wild cat who can't bring herself, bring himself to uh, harm an innocent animal, the polar bear who, who even with all that fur is still cold. Oh, and there are a few sexual gags in here too. One with a deer, and another with a lizard shedding her skin. But of course, it is a strip tease. Fucking genius. Although the Hays Code really hurts this cartoon. I think it would have been funnier if we actually saw the lizard's tits. Anyway, the adult and the kid jokes oak was pretty good, and the ending punchline is pretty damn good. So yeah, I enjoyed this cartoon for what it was. Rating 4 out of 5 stars with the title of Awesome. Confederate Honey. This one is not that bad. In fact, it's actually kind of good. I mean, the only thing I don't like, I don't care for is the blackface jokes. But there is one blackface character who is a slave that says, don't be too ambitious. I interpreted that as a subtle little commentary on how, even back then, slavery was not as ambitious, not as in, not as efficient as people thought. But what do I like about the cartoon? Well, the jokes are surprisingly pretty fucking good. Okay, they're not all bangers, but they are creative. And I, I like that the cartoon keeps things a bit more lighthearted this time. I do like dark jokes, but I don't think this would have worked for this cartoon. I like the little bit of anachronism with the radio, too. But the ending punchline is just fucking great. So overall, I like this one. Rating 4 out of 5 stars with the title of Awesome. The Bear's Tail. This is actually not that bad of a cartoon. It's basically what would happen if the story of the three bears did not go as it usually goes. But it also kind of satirizes the Little Red Riding Hood story. It's almost kind of satirizing how predictable fairy tales are. I'm also getting a little bit of the Shrek influence from this cartoon. The joke of every single bear thinking that porridge is too hot is fucking hilarious. The Papa Bear constantly laughs, and that is pretty funny actually. But the ending where the bears move out of their home is hilarious. I think I like this one more than Little Red Walking Hood. Rating 4 out of 5 stars with the title of Awesome. Slap Happy Pappy. This is another one about chickens breeding. You know I'm not a fan of that. It's about a rooster wanting a rooster as a son. At one point he says, I'm going to have a son. Aren't you happy for me? To another chicken. And the chicken says sarcastically, I am very happy indeed. That is exactly how I feel about this whole story. Also, also, this cartoon stars Porky, but he barely has a presence in this cartoon. Yeah, he runs the farm, but the cartoon is not about that, once again. The ending gag with the father asking his hatched chick, are you a boy? And the chick says, saying it maybe, has a different meaning now than it would have back then. But even then, it's not enough to make up to make anything else in this cartoon interesting. Rating 2 out of 5 stars with the title of Okay But Lacks Staying Power. Porky's Poor Fish. This one actually has some good gags. The holy mackerel gag is pretty good. The fish of the soul, or whatever the fuck that was called, is also a pretty good gag. Even Porky's song about his fish story was pretty damn good. There were also a group of fish that were fleeing that were flying to get a cat and the and they flew their their fighter and they flew like fighter planes that was a nice touch there was some slapstick but not that much well these are pretty good i wouldn't call this one great i'm not a fan of the cat being the villain in these shorts and while it's not spectacular the ending gag made sure of that there are plenty of things to like about it. 
rating three out of five stars with the title of Worth Watching. The Hardship of Miles Standish. It's another short film about love. So the premise is that there's a story on the radio that Miles Standish ended up with a girl. But, the, but an older man tells his son that that is a lie and he tells him the quote-unquote real story. More on that later. Anyway, there are a few funny gags like the really dark one with a sign that says don't open till, until Christmas. Or the one when uh, John A. Alden, who Elmer Fudd plays, getting a gun from a place that has a sign that says don't use unless... Indians break it. And when he pulls the gun on from it, he he just breaks the glass. But the but the things that I don't like are the fact that the song that John sings is too fucking saccharine and the rest of the jokes aren't not that great. Oh, and the ending is confusing as hell. Unlike the last cartoon, the good doesn't really outweigh the bad. Rating, 2 out of 5 stars, with a title of OK but lacks staying power. Sniffles takes a trip. If you think this cartoon is about Sniffles doing drugs, you would be wrong. Besides, that would not have flown back then, and considering a previous Sniffles cartoon was about him getting drunk, and it was pretty bad, not that great, I don't think that it would have been all that entertaining. Really, this is just another Sniffles cartoon about with some really saccharine shit and an overall boring story. It's supposed to be about how Country Meadows is not what it seems to be, but most of the shit that happens is completely normal. Sure, it might be scary for a mouse, but still. I guess the parts when Sniffles tries to go to sleep are interesting. I didn't think that was possible, but overall, I don't think I will be coming back to this one anytime soon. Rating, 2 out of 5 stars with the title of OK But Black Staying Power. You Ought To Be In Pictures. This might be controversial, but I think this one is kind of overrated. Now, I don't hate this one. In fact, there's a plenty to like about it, but I don't consider it the best. The things that I like about it are, I like that, I really do admire that, the fact that it's an animation live action hybrid. This would be one of the first to actually do it in a way that is more familiar. That is fucking impressive, especially considering the time period. I also really like how the real life characters in the short film are very cartoony. I think it fits so fucking well. It does have some wacky parts in it. However, the things I don't like are that the story is kind of basic and not that engaging, to be quite honest. It's just about Daffy tricking Porky into getting rid of his contract so that Daffy can become a star. Considering that Porky is not really having a presence in a lot of his cartoons, having Daffy take over the spotlight might have actually been a better idea. But of course it ends with Porky not wanting to give up his contract, and Leon Schlesinger revealing that he actually didn't rip up Porky's contract. I will admit that was pretty clever of an ending. It was a pretty clever way of ending the cartoon and then Porky beating up, beating the shit out of Daffy. While it's far from my favorite, I am glad I did see it. Rating 3 out of 5 stars with the title of Worth Watching. A Gander at Mother Goose. This is another compilation of gags. Now most of them are actually pretty funny. They subvert the nursery rhymes and fa fairy tales that millions of children know. Examples would include Humpty Dumpty falling off only to have his ass break when he falls, or Jack and Jill going up the hill to get it on, or the three little pigs surrendering to the wolf and giving him some alcohol. That one is followed by probably the best fucking use of why doesn't anybody tell me these things, gag? Well, they start out that way, but the ending gags are pretty lackluster, to be quite honest. That's a bit of a bummer. But since I did, like, a majority of the gags, I would say it's better than I thought it would be, and definitely worth checking out. Rating, 3 out of 5 stars, with the title of Worth Watching. Tom Thumb in Trouble. 
This is another one that I would not describe as funny, but I don't think it was intended to be funny. It is more of an emotional story about Tom being in a lot of danger and a bird in a lot of danger and a bird trying to rescue him from it. His father believes that the bird is the one that causes Tom to get into danger, but Tom assures that the bird is or it actually helped him out of danger. And Tom is right. The most emotional scene is when the father thinks that Tommy that Tom has died. But Tom reveals that the bird saved him. The biggest gripe that I have with the cartoon is that the beginning is really saccharine and not fun to watch. It doesn't help that Tom has a re really similar voice to Sniffles. You know, you know how much I love that voice. But this one has something that the Sniffles cartoons don't have, heart. I wouldn't see many people re-watching this one, mainly because of the sadder moments, but it's definitely worth checking out. Rating 3 out of 5 stars with the title of Worth Watching. The Chewin Bruin. This one is pretty good. It's about a dog telling a story to Porky about how he hunted a bear. There are some decent gags in the story, and I do like the winter aesthetic. I really fucking love how the thing that gets the dog really pissed is the fact that the bear stole his candy. He, he then probably beats the shit out of him. Also, the ending gag is a really funny twist. The only gripe that I have with it is, once again, Porky, Porky barely does anything in this cartoon. Rating, 4 out of 5 stars with the title of Awesome. Circus Today. This one is just a bunch of random gags revolving on the circus. But actually, these are actually pretty fucking funny. Some highlights would include the one where the Arabian guy walks across a fire floor, the one where the guy puts his head in a lion's mouth and vice versa, the one where the girl grabs a tissue with her teeth while riding a horse. What a fucking weird trick. I even kind of like the stork gag. Basically, it has a stork annoyed that a mother keeps asking him for him why he can't give her a boy. The gorilla and the elephant gags are pretty good too. But it is all capped off with a really ambiguously dark gag. Overall, this is probably one of the best of these random gag cartoons. Rating 4 out of 5 stars with the title of Awesome. Little Blabbermouse. Okay, I really do like the personality of a tour guide mouse. He is modeled very much after W.C. Fields. He is a pretty charming fellow and seems enthusiastic about the tour he's giving to all the mice. The cartoon starts out with some pretty decent gags, most of which are puns about types of drugs at a, for a drugstore. These are actually really fucking clever. But the second half of the is just a lot of singing and dancing, which, as I made it known, I'm not a fan of. Although the tobacco song has some interesting lyrics, only half of me wants to be good. I guess I can relate to that shit. But that is one detail that is drowned out by the flowery singing and the banal climax involving a rat. A cat, actually. I guess the ending gag is kind of funny. So I will say this one is better than a long flirtation walk, even if they share similar problems. Rating 3 out of 5 stars with the title of Worth Watching. Porky's Baseball Broadcast. This one has a good idea. I do like the idea of Porky being a radio commentator over a baseball game. It actually has Porky play more of an active role in a cartoon. As for the gags, some of them are funny, like the turtle who talks really fast. The batter in the hole one was also pretty damn good. Some of them are not that funny, like the audience member joke, like the one no, where, where the, the guy can't get his seat or whatever, although it does have a pretty good payoff. Why do all the weak gags sh have shockingly good payoffs at the end? That is fucking confusing. But one joke that does not get, have a good payoff because 
it's the only one used, is the trapped gag. That one is just kind of off. This is not my favorite, but there is a lot to like about it. Rating 3 out of 5 stars with the title of Worth Watching. The Egg Collector. Okay, this cartoon is bad. Sniffles is a completely unlikable character in this one. First of all, he is so dumb, he doesn't even know that he is a rodent. Second of all, his whole motivation is to steal a fucking egg. Oh, come on, this shit again? I can't root for this guy. He wants to steal an owl's offspring. That is something that fucking Yosemite Sam would do. Not the hero of the cartoon. What makes it worse is that, unlike Little Brother Rat, he does not do anything to make up to make himself look like a hero, like save the fucking owl from another predator or something. The only possible saving grace is the ending gag, but I will admit it's a little bit clever, but not enough to redeem this cartoon. Rating, 1 out of 5 stars with the title of Horrible. A Wild Hare. This is actually not a bad cartoon. This is like the official pilot of the Elmer Fudd hunting cartoons. It has bugs with, back with a voice that is way more similar to his regular voice. This is actually the first cartoon to feature Bugs' famous line, What's up, Doc? While the gags are not really fucking spectacular, um, my favorite one is where Elmer Fudd thinks there are rabbits here and that, and that Bugs might be a rabbit. And then Bugs says, confidentially, I am a rabbit! Fucking classic. It also has Bugs, once again, guilt-tripping Elmer. While the ending is not the greatest, I do like how they use a military marching song when Bugs goes back to his hole. To be, like, to be honest, a lot of the gags are not that great, but it's their first time doing them something like this, so I do appreciate the effort. And hey! There was a lot that I enjoyed about this cartoon, so I can't bring myself to say it's bad or even mediocre. Definitely worth checking out if you want the first official Elmer Fudd slash Bugs Bunny cartoon. Rating 3 out of 5 stars with the title of Worth Watching. Ghost Wanted. This is another one that is not that bad. It's about a ghost that tries to get a job. He finds one at a dark house. All he has to do is try to be scary. Sure, the cartoon goes pretty fucking insane, but hey, that's Mary Melody slash Looney Tunes for ya. What I do like about this one is that the other ghost is the only one that has dialogue. I do like the dynamite gags as well. I also really dig the dark atmosphere this cartoon has. The animation on the ghost is also really fucking good. The biggest problems I have is that it is pretty slow and the ending gag is not that great. But if you like ghost themed, if you want a ghost themed cartoon, this is not a bad one to watch. Rating 3 out of 5 stars with the title of Worth Watching. Patient Porky. This one is not the greatest. It mostly revolves around hospital gags. A lot of them are pretty stupid, like the Chris Chan joke. There were some that I liked, like the hippo piano gag and the chase at the end, but it is followed by a pretty weak ending gag. This is not a bad idea, but I think Daffy Doc did this, the Daffy Doc did this better. It's not even entertaining, it's not even the entertaining kind of stupid, it's more of the aggravating kind. I wish I had more to say about it, but there's really nothing worth talking about. Rating 2 out of 5 stars with the title of OK But Lacks Staying Power. Stealing Hero. This is a mockumentary about planes. Most of the gags are actually pretty fucking funny. They actually did get a few laughs out of me. Some good ones would be the fireworks hot dog gag, the traffic jam gag, the vacation gag, and the stunt gag to name a few. The, pe the, car the planes almost kind of function like cars. I also really like the colors of the planes in this one. The ending gag is pretty fucking good and wild. It's a whole section of a pilot flying a plane way too high and having his wings freeze so much that a pair polar bear takes refuge on it. Sure, there is a continuity error with the next shot not featuring the, pair, the bear at all while the plane is falling. 
but that would have probably been a pain in the ass to animate. The ending punchline is also really damn good. Not one of the best, but still pretty damn good. Rating 4 out of 5 stars with the title of Awesome. Malibu Beach Party. So this seems like a parody of Jack Benny. I don't know Jack Benny's work all that well, so I don't really get it. Maybe it would have been funnier for those who do. That being said, most of the jokes are pretty lame. The only one I kind of liked was the one where he compares himself to Robert Taylor. I also do like the girl who sings the almost operatic song before the final act with uh, Jack Bunny, who is the character that's supposed to represent Jack Benny. The ending is pretty fucking bad. It just has Jack B Bunny play the violin slightly off key, and it ends with a pretty classless joke. This cartoon may have been funnier back then, but I don't see many people nowadays enjoying it, especially that last joke. Rating 2 out of 5 stars with the title of OK Black Staying Power. Calling Dr. Porky. Okay, the first part of this cartoon is pretty, actually pretty good. It has a decent gag revolving around the receptionist using a radio to talk to patients, and she does have a memorable voice. However, the cartoon is based on, really, on a really confusing joke. It's about a man who sees elephants, and he's the only one that sees them. Actually, and however, they actually fuck around with him, and clearly have an effect on the real world. So the interpretation that he is hallucinating is completely out of the question. These elephants are outright dickheads to him. They ask him a lot of questions and don't give him enough time to answer any of them. They also torture him. How the hell is this supposed to be funny? What did this man do to deserve this torment? The ending when Porky gives him the uh, medicine to help him might have saved this cartoon, but it is ruined by the elephants coming back again and trapping him in a room. This cartoon has a good idea, they, but they just didn't know how to make it look good on film. Rating 2 out of 5 stars with the title of OK But Lack Staying Power. Stage Fright. This one is actually not that bad. This is another cartoon to feature those dogs from Doggone Modern and Presto Changeo, so that means no dialogue. There are some decent gags in the beginning with the bouncy teeter-totter thing. There is also a little bit of slapstick. Not as much as those cartoons, but it's there. I even like how they incorp how a sea lion is incorporated into the cartoon. It does kind of crawl when the bird asks acts like a bastard by refusing to give the dog his bone for no reason. Although, I guess he redeems himself by splitting it up and giving both pieces to both dogs. Not as good as, the, as those two, but it's still worth checking out if you can find it. Rating 3 out of 5 stars with the title of Worth Watching. And that'll do it for part 3. Um, as you can see, there are definitely more good cartoons than bad ones this time. I think there was only like five bad cartoons, but uh, we're definitely going to see a lot more of Bugs Bunny, and we're also getting into the war propaganda cartoons, and those are going to vary in quality, so stay tuned. Anyway, I'm Spike Robot. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, you can subscribe to my channel, and take it easy on the Freedom Jingos. If it don't hurt, I get suspicious. I like to take the life and twist it. Yeah, my love is sacrilegious I'm not scared to admit it This violence is delicious What does it